So this is IPFS recovery. We built this in HackFS 2020 that happened over the course of like uh, two months ago, uh, lasting 30 days. So this is kind of a story of, uh, of how we, like of what we did and uh, sprinkled with uh, ample technical details. Uh, so coming into this hackathon, I had a lot of experience working with uh, distributed uh, uh, error correction in, in error correction in the context of distributed systems. So I thought it would be a pretty cool idea to bring this over to IPFS. Um, and what are the problems that uh, I that that this solves? So like the existing problems that I wanted to tackle were uh, data corruption can lead to losses in uh, vital information because. Uh, Data, when you have a distributed system, you have data at storage and data at, uh, in, in transit, and you want to ensure that there is integrity of both uh, both these uh, modes of data. Uh, so data, data at rest can be uh, compromised by things like coffee poured on your laptop or like a massive power grid failure. Uh, and if, uh, I, if, if, if content is being served, potentially vital content is being served from your devices onto uh, other devices in the network, you, you don't want this to happen. You want to ensure that there are different uh, ways to access the same information in your in your distributed system. Um, so you also have the problem of node churn where devices can just go offline for any reason whatsoever. I could just decide I want to turn my computer off, right? Uh, and also there's the issue of censorship. If there are people who are actively targeting data that's certain types of data on the network, uh, they could go to any link to make sure that it's not there. Um, and finally, uh, transient connectivity. Uh, poor internet connectivity can happen for all kinds of reasons. In, the, in a distributed system. So it's, uh, it's important to have that, that consideration. Uh, I also wanna add um, cybersecurity has three components, which is uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Uh, so confidentiality is probably the one that's probably paid most attention to. Uh, so integrity and availability are quite important too. So I think uh, uh, erasure coding is, is what's really uh, the, the solution that, that allows us to uh, ensure proper cybersecurity for distributed systems. So what is erasure coding? It's, it's a method of data protection in which data is broken into fragments, expanded and encoded with redundant data pieces and stored across a set of different locations or storage media. Uh, well, what this jargon actually means is uh, data on uh, data that's erasure coded kind of becomes like a hydra where you have multiple heads and if you chop off uh, some of the heads, it, you, can, you can, like it just keeps recovering over and over again. Uh, until you chop off most or if not all the heads. Uh, so uh, it's, it's worth consuming some extra storage to obtain better data resiliency and routing performance. And uh, um, the data can be spread uh, across the network in, geographically, so it even allows for better performance and delivery guarantees. Um, so wh why, is, why does this matter specifically for IPFS? Uh, well, I, I think the uh, distribution of data in the limitless manner that's in the core of IPFS, it requires strong integrity guarantees. But we wanna make sure that data is available at all costs, uh, no matter what kind of data it is, we wanna make sure it's, it's, it's available. Uh, it doesn't matter who or what circumstance is trying to get rid of that data, it, it, we wanna ensure that it's still there. Uh, and it, it's, it's, it's a long requested feature. There are issues like GitHub issues from like uh, 2016 that are, that are still open that, uh, that address this issue. And uh, no, no specific solution exists for the IPLD layer, which is where we actually built this out, uh, as you'll see shortly. Uh, and finally, we kind of kept this in the spirit uh, of uh, IPFS, uh, which is just keep it very modular and pluggable in, in many different ways. So we actually have a few different erasure codes that we built out. So I'll, I'll let uh, Hleep talk a little bit about our hack and what we actually built. Oh, I think you're on mute. There you go. Uh, hey guys, um, um, I'll go with some more technical details. So how it all works. Um, first is, uh, my original goal uh, was to create um, a module for recovery that will follow most of the uh, best, practice, best, best practices uh, I've seen in IPFS and how you do modular things, uh, how you split everything. So uh, this module also introduced uh, uh, interfaces that uh, like tries to be uh, like uh, useful abstract and like uh, convenient use. Um, or originally, we started uh, like um, to think uh, 
we 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 uh, got that we need uh, IPFS need erasure coding. We did some research and seen that uh, actually there is uh, a lot of issues regarding that, like ideas on how to implement. Uh, but um, like uh, I decided to use uh, to integrate that in IPLD and uh, IPFS currently work with first version of IPLD, so uh, the IPFS recovery is integrated over there. Um, for, for the hug demonstration, for a thing that's uh, to, to, um, to show something on uh, HackFS, we uh, also added uh, a new commands to IPFS. Uh, the main one is encode, uh, that allows you to uh, encode any uh, deck uh, to, rec to recoverable deck. Uh, so you just put one uh, one CAD and you get another one. Uh, and interesting is that uh, when you do IPFS get uh, or using the other hash you got, you will still uh, see the original file. So actually, you just interchange uh, one one hash to another hash, and uh, you still be able to uh, get original content by this newly generated uh, hash. Uh, which also has a recovery feature. Um, also, uh, there are like different uh, ideas for commons that can be uh, added to IPFS CLI that will expand the, uh, the IP, IPFS with new features and uh, um, like uh, will help to manage recoveries in some way. So you can do manual recoveries or you can uh look at um uh like uh, some states uh in ipfs recovery model that are that can be useful to see uh, through the bug sessions um our main implementation uh, uh as uh like we we which is resolomon which is kind of uh very popular erasure coding and it's simple to understand um uh, I won't be describing how it works. Um, I think, in terms of uh, uh, like some mathematical details, uh, but uh, uh, simply, uh, it just allows you to uh, to recover. Uh, to first, it generates some additional uh, blocks uh, for your existing blocks. Uh, for example, you have seven blocks, but uh, you uh, decided to generate three more blocks uh, that will uh, that will then we will have 10 blocks at all but if you will lose any three of them doesn't matter what you can still uh, get the original file uh, so you still can regenerate uh, those those blocks that represents the actual user data even if you lost them uh, so about implementation um, we need it to uh, for for this uh, for Ritzelmon and uh, for um, for IPLD integration. Uh, we needed to uh, like find a way to integrate it. And uh, IPLD we, we uh, zero uh, has uh, nodes uh, interface uh, that uh, can be addressed by a CAD. And uh, that CD defines the content which is uh, connected to like actual uh, node implementation. And uh, we added a new CD codec, uh, like custom to address uh, newly uh, new new nodes, uh, new recovery nodes that uh, are uh, wrapping uh, proto nodes, uh, which are used as links to uh, to blocks on the network. And uh, what this uh, recovery node does, it also like adds additional free links to uh, uh, N uh, recovery nodes uh, links to, to, to the node. So uh, this uh, allows um, the recovery work on the uh, whole IPFS network. That means that if you have a kind of uh, you have a recovery node, but you 
can get the block you need, you can fall back to uh, getting the block um, Mm, for getting recovery nodes and uh, that will help you to recover the block you originally needed needed uh, and the good thing is that this works uh, not just on your local node but uh, if you want to uh, distribute your content share it with others on IPFS and it may be maybe very demanding and uh, it flows around the IPFS network, so it uh, really helps uh, to recover and to uh, increase uh, availability of the data you uh, store on IPFS. That's kind of like uh, let's continue on um, implementation. Um, so this ID hack, uh, this ID is um, new codec. It's not. Uh, it is actually a, ha a hack because uh, from I, my understanding um, we need kind of separate uh, things uh, uh, to kind of plugins new CIDV free model where we can add additional plugins or some additional uh, letters or something to make CIDs uh, additional custom data uh, to to address uh, that some additional uh, capabilities of the data you address uh, because uh, recovery isn't actually a codec you can tell that uh, this uh, node any node as a is a recover like you can tell that recovery is encoding encoding or um, because codec is used mostly to say, uh, okay, I use uh, JSON encoding, I use Docprot above, I use uh, uh, any other like codec uh, to uh, to, uh, to understand how to uh, get the blocks to to the memory. Uh, about encoding implementation, so uh, there is a important uh, quality of read Solomon. It uh, states that all the blocks should have um, same size. And that was kind of like issue for us to, uh, to solve uh, because uh, IPFS blocks are not always uh, have the same size, but Reed Solomon needs them to be the same. So uh, we, I've decided to use um, and to encode uh, the size for the actual blocks. Uh, inside the uh, redundant nodes um, that way uh, when we try to uh, um, recover some blocks uh, we uh, copy blocks we have into shards there is kind of special data structure and it it manages uh, uh, do we have enough uh, needed amount of uh, blocks uh, and it helps you to uh, to actually uh, restore the blocks with their original size and get their original size. Uh, we use uh, variable integer there uh, to uh, get original uh, data for, for that to work in IPFS like plug and play. Because uh, if you have a, have a deck that you already created, you need to encode it, but not to change it uh, drastically for, for the data be still uh, readable in um, IPFS manner. Uh, I hope you, uh, I hope I uh, explained this understandable. Um, the next thing I want like to tell you is a custom DAC session. So for, um, for, um, IPLD V0, um, IPFS use dark service uh, that uh, allows you to get uh, the uh, IPFS nodes by CIDs. Uh, and there is a concept of sessions that separate some uh, logic, uh, some like group of nodes um, for you to, to fetch from the internet or got it locally. So uh, custom dark session, um, manages uh, key pairs of um, already uh, recovered uh, of the garden blocks, like the blocks you retrieved, 
and saves them uh, as a reference for a next uh, iteration of uh, traversing the graph to understand if um, the node I'm failed to uh, get from the network uh, to get uh, its parents. This is kind of like soft link currently implemented and um, uh, just just in memory uh, where you uh, understand who can recover the node I have, uh, the node I need right now in this current session. So currently they are saved in uh, memory, but I think there should be a special uh, like uh, special components uh, that wraps data store. And uh, it's just saves locally small uh, metadata uh, about uh, what nodes can be recovered from, from what. Um, this won't add a lot of um, like uh, additional storage, but it's still useful. And it works only locally. So you, 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 uh, the node knows, uh, knows uh, uh, what, what can I use to recover something, uh, something I need, um, something user asked. Uh, the fourth thing is uh, recover. Uh, this is actually an interface uh, uh, that has a read Solomon implementation. Uh, it manages states for recoveries because uh, if we, for example, imagine uh, IPFS gateway and many people try to get some something from it, um, it may cause that in in the same moment of in the same moment a few uh, the, there will be a recovery process for for the same data uh, that we would like to avoid. So there is a recovery singleton that uh, manages uh, different recovery sessions, and um, uh, the, what allows it to for any user of IPFS to uh, point to. Um, oh, sorry, my my headphones are off. Uh, to point to uh, to recovery session that can be uh, going on at the same time. Um, that's probably all about implementation, Reed Solomon. I think there is. Um, this, that's all I wanted to tell about this. Uh, the fourth thing is um, draft for novel alpha entanglement implementation. So um, Reed Solomon is um, industry standard for erasure coatings, but uh, there is a lot of ongoing research uh, regarding coatings, and there is interesting novel alpha entanglement uh, uh, paper and uh, Govin had a chance to even contact uh, the, the people who were created uh, this paper. And they also did a hack for Ethereum uh, and they integrated somehow those novel alpha entanglements. But uh, we decided to keep this uh, out of the scope, like Reed Solomon is easier to understand and easier to implement, but we have a draft implementation for alpha entanglements. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'd just like to say a couple of things about that. Uh, first of all, I was stuck on mute for, <laughs> for the longest time, so I couldn't say anything. Uh, yeah, so alpha entanglement is a way of uh, data being spread across the network where you have uh, actual data. Uh, when you have data uploaded onto uh, the network, which is uh, could be multiple different files. So you're, you could upload a file, someone else could upload a file. Uh, there are redundancies that are formed for both these files uh, in such a way that uh, your file could potentially help someone else's, uh, recover someone else's file, uh, which could be damaged or degraded for the reasons that I mentioned before. Uh, so this is a, it's a very new form and uh, it has been, uh, there are a lot of experimentation going on with other distributed systems such as Ethereum Swarm as well. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, bring that over to the IPFS world. So, you know, uh, I think uh, the modularity, the high level of modularity that we have with IPFS recovery also helps for us to plug in any erasure codes uh, that in the future could be even more crazy, right? Uh, what we want to achieve is like the information theoretic bounds for how, uh, how much uh, we can recover out of uh, degraded data. Um, and uh, the last point here is uh, test ground. Uh, so well, of course, the good folks over at IPFS uh, created test ground. 
And it's, uh, we want to kind of battle test uh, our implementation of recovery, both with Solomon, Alpha Entanglement, and all of them, and see how, get an exact metric for how much uh, degradation we are able to, uh, degradation of data and also of the nodes on the network that we're able to resist. Uh, and that's, that's going to be a key factor of uh, determining how, uh, how this can be uh, integrated with the core and then, you know, potentially deployed in the uh, mainnet. Um, I think, uh, yeah, there were some points about recoverability that uh, we also wanted to make. So, if we could do uh, so there are like uh, concepts that can be uh, used on, that are kind of interface level uh, that uh, should be covered here. Uh, the first is recoverability. So um, this is kind of um, thing that allows you to, to like, it's a, it's a parameter for the data for this encoded data that defines like percentage uh, you want for your data to be uh, safely lost uh, look it's recoverability if you lost the percent uh, you put in the recoverability of the data you will still be able to retrieve it from the network so let's say i want a recoverability uh, i have a DAC already in the network and I do encode on it, putting recoverability 25%. And um, what it does, it generates 25%, uh, like adds more nodes to this whole deck. And uh, if you lose 25% actually from this deck, you originally have on a network, you'll still be able to read the whole data from, from it. But uh, like, if you really like, we can tell, we just add more data, uh, add more, 25% more data. But in terms of distributed systems, I think that uh, this uh, overhead is, is, uh, is helpful and it will allow the, for content to be uh, better retrievable. That's kind of this thing. Uh, and, um, for Reed Solomon, uh, this recoverability works uh, uh, not with percent. It works just like we have a parameter that uh, uh, defines the amount uh, of node uh, of nodes you want to generate uh, for all the dog layers. Uh, if you can see on the on the picture we have here, so if we have recoverability two for the root block. We have uh, that has two um, nodes. We uh, recoverability two generates two more for uh, to in case uh, two and three are lost. Uh, th this is also like a possible case. And if you lost 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 three, you won't be uh, able to uh, get the contents of uh, uh, six and uh, everything that goes under three. Right. So at, at each level, uh, uh, that is at each parent node, you, you have uh, the number that's specified by your recoverability, that many redundancies are created. So at this level, you can see that uh, A and B are created and connected uh, to one so in such a way that if, uh, if you lose any two of these four nodes, you can use the rest to recover all of them. Uh, and the same applies for two and all its, all its children, five and all its children, any, any parent node that has all its children. So this is, again, this is uh, Reed Solomon. If you have uh, alpha entanglements uh, in our in our GitHub, uh, in one of the issues, you can actually see a more specified diagram for that uh, kind of use case. Uh, so there's there's there, it's there's different ways to play around with the DAG structure, uh, thanks to you know the IPLV API, which is uh, allows for this kind of thing to be done really well. Um, and a little bit about strategies as well, please. Uh, yes. So this is. Uh... When you um, reach, get the network from the uh, get the data from the IPFS, uh, you um, and you fall back to recovery. Uh, this might uh, uh, will lead to additional data on your node that you haven't asked for. Uh, I mean that if I uh, I need some content, and uh, to get that content. Uh, I need another content and this another content is able on the network. I got it. I, uh, I, it helped me to recover 
uh, the data I needed, but I haven't asked for that data uh, to recover. So um, this strategy is this kind of thing that might be like, it's better to put kind of in IPFS config that uh, will do for you, uh, like help you to decide what to do with the data, uh, this additional data you need for recovery. Yeah. Like we have three to that. That. Uh, first is all. Mm, that means that you will uh, help the network and you will store everything. Just data means that uh, you will store only data. Um, data means um, only data means that you will be able to, when you do recovery, you can uh, of the file. This file might be. You can get just part of the file. You don't need the whole file, but this part of the file uh, has uh, uh, some like lost blocks. And uh, you need uh, what you do. You uh, fall back to other data blocks for you to recover original blocks. But if you have, if the user haven't asked for them, like uh, in case of a third option, that wouldn't store the, the, this. Uh, those blocks wouldn't be stored. But if you choose just data, it, um, in, in this case I described, uh, you, the data you haven't asked for, but uh, you still fetch it from the network, or you uh, also may, may regenerate it uh, um, with other blocks you ask for. In just data, you will save them locally. Uh, maybe you need, need the future, or you will help to network, and you will actually provide it to the network. In case you request the data, you'll just do what you, uh, you'll save only things you need, not the thing uh, helped you to get what you need. Yeah, in, in the interest of time, because I think we're kind of running low, uh, there are some use cases where, you know, maybe more vital use cases where I think uh, storing data and redundancies are, uh, would be important, even if it means paying a little bit more, you know, having the, uh, bearing a little bit more cost. And then there are some cases, like probably more average cases where you just want to get the data and keep the data. So uh, we want to have these different kinds of strategies as well. Um, and I think this, uh, uh, the future really holds uh, for community understand. discussions. We want to be able to talk uh, with the community, see how, I mean, we have a lot of ideas clearly, right? We want to see what kind of ideas uh, you guys have and how we can implement this both for yeah. JavaScript and Go IPFS. Uh, also, no, on, I wanted to uh, yeah. add here about the uh, second version of IPLD. Uh, I haven't got enough time to actually dive into new specs. Uh, they, uh, like, uh, that Protocol Labs works on. Uh, I know that there is a lot of new cool features that might be used for recovery as well, but uh, I'm not sure what uh, exact features we can use it for. But recovery, as I said already, uh, for um, CID part, uh, that recovery is kind of, it's, it's a feature for this content. It's not a, an actual way to represent this content. So um, adding like additional, uh, more something to, to CID that will also be uh, put in IPLD, I think it's kind of connected things. Kind of this. Um, also, the second point, the finding recovery notes over ADHD. Um, Govin already told uh, about this in terms of alpha entanglements, but uh, there is also interesting idea. Um, you, I've de I described you soft links uh, that are used for, uh, for you can locally uh, find what nodes you need to recover the data you asked for. And um, you will clearly store this in that data store, but what if we put this on DHT? Uh, that will uh, allow us to create kind of soft links on the network. So this would be a kind of last resort for you to restore, uh, for to recover the data. Uh, like actually IPFS currently, when you try to get something and um, it will just endlessly wait for that, for the data it can find. What if we can do, asynchronously uh, other things to, uh, to, to find other, uh, other things on the network. 
a kind of soft link. So you can match that this can recover that uh, because they, um, someone connected them. And there is a, a motivation for, um, for people, for users uh, to um, do interconnected uh, recovery nodes. Uh, so for example, you want your uh, data to help other person uh, other other data to recover, so you can connect and make those like helpful nodes that will connect uh, different parts of the different decks and will uh, help uh, from the from these two decks. You'll create some redundant nodes more, mm -hmm. and they uh, that way if you can help different data uh, help each other to um, to recover them. Even though I can, there is an interesting example when uh, you want your content to be more distributed over the network, you can connect it with demanding content. You can help uh, demanding content to recover. So that way, your content will be much more like distributed for some peers who uh, uh, needed a recovery for a demanding content. So th there is, there is a lot of. Uh, future do things.